the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Your graces, your lordships, most Signore, very rev and reverend fathers, dear reverend sisters and reverend mothers, superiors of various religious congregations present, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, please excuse my voice this morning. It is not my usual voice. But that's the one that God has given me this morning for this celebration. On Wednesday, I started having some itching on my throat. And I started coughing and sneezing. And it has just resulted in this loss of my usual voice. But I thank God for everything. And I thank God for this day. And I thank you all for coming together here this morning to rejoice with me, I thank God with me and for me, as I do for you too, for the gift of life, for the gift of our faith, for the gift of the church, and for being together to witness his love and mercy and faithfulness in our lives. Today is the Feast of the Apostles, Simon and Jude. We give thanks to God for they, the, the foundation members of the church to which you and I belong today that they played their part so well that the faith has spread to the ends of the earth and we are their successors in missionary work. Let us thank God for the grace that given to us now so that we may remain faithful to him till the end of our own time too so that when our time on earth is over, all of us will share in the kingdom of heaven in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us dispose ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily as we call to mind our sins, asking God to forgive us and grant us pardon. I confess to Almighty God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who always listen mercifully to your servants in distress, we humbly beseech you as we give thanks for your kindness, particularly towards me, your servant, as have marked 80 years on the face of the earth, that free from all evil, we may constantly serve you in gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Isaiah. I will recount the merciful love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel, which he has granted them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, sons who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore.
dust he lifts up the lowly from the ash he raises the poor to set them in the company of princes yes with the princes of his people Dominus Vobiscum Lexus Sant Evangelis Secundum Lucam In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judea. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me that the mother of the Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden, and behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has strength 
with his arm and has scattered the proud in the imagination of your hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. He has spoken to our fathers, to Abraham and his posterity forever. Evangeli Domini. Bishop, Most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins, Your Excellencies, Right and Very Reverend Monsignori and Fathers, 
are dear male and female religious, distinguished men and women of church and state, our dear brothers and sisters of other ecclesial communion, our dear seminarians, members of the Okodua family, the good parishioners of St. Anthony's Catholic Church, Baja, our celebrant for the day, I respectfully greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Amen. That beautiful song we just sang is derived from Psalm 100, a psalm of thanksgiving, which further says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Inspired by this psalm, our dear Monsignor Bernard Ayodele Okudwa invites us to join him at this Eucharistic celebration the highest form of worship and thanksgiving for us as Catholics, to thank God as he turns 80 years on earth. On his 80th birthday, Monsieur Okodwa is thanking God for the gift of long life and the many blessings he has put into those years. He particularly thanks God for his mercy, which endures forever. The scripture is replete with cases of people giving thanks or showing gratitude. We recall the example of Abel's generous thanksgiving sacrifice in Genesis chapter 4, verse 4 and following. We recall also the hymn of thanksgiving of our mother Mary, in the Magnificat, which we read in the Gospel reading of the, at this Mass, Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 55. We also recall the classic story of the ten lepers in the Bible who received healing while only one returned to give thanks to Jesus. Luke chapter 17 verse 11 to 19. A common element in all these examples reveals to us that thanksgiving is always a consequence of faith. No one can really thank God unless he believes in God as the source of his being and the source of all the blessings in his or her life. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 4 says, By faith, Abel offered a better thanksgiving than Cain. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God gave approval to his gifts. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. Similarly, Mary's hymn of thanksgiving, the Magnificat, is a beautiful expression of her faith and trust in God. She proclaims, as we read in the Gospel, the Almighty has done marvels for me. Holy is his name. This is a declaration of God's greatness and mercy 
and it reveals Mary's deep understanding of God's plan for salvation. In the Magnificat, Mary rejoices in God as her Savior and acknowledges that she has been blessed by God. In the case of the ten lepers, they called on Jesus from a distance for mercy in their misery. That was indeed what Jesus granted them, mercy. It is very significant that we note that it was mercy that was granted because according to St. Augustine, mercy is when love is poured on misery. All God's blessings to humanity are instances of God looking with love on our nothingness from the point of mercy. That is what was given by Jesus to the lepers. Unfortunately, dear friends, most times people fail to thank God because of lack of faith or distorted faith. Ten lepers were healed. Only one returned to give thanks. Why? To understand why we often fail to thank God in our lives. According to Charles Brown, let us look at the reason the nine lepers did not return to give thanks. Why didn't the nine return before we start blaming them? One, the first one wanted to wait to see if the cure was real. Two, the second one wanted to see if the cure will last. The third one said he would see Jesus later. No need being in a hurry. The fourth one said or decided that I never had leprosy after all. The fifth one said, well, I would have gotten better all the same. I already started feeling it. The sixth one said, it's not really Jesus that did it. It's the priest because it was when I showed myself to the priest, I got healed. The seventh one said, Oh, well, we are not really sure Jesus did it. How could he have just said, and it is done? The eighth person said, any rabbi could have done it. What is special? And the ninth person said, I was already much improved. Just the last tablet I took this morning did the miracle. These are models of the reasons we do not thank God. Though all of them received God's mercy, only one acknowledged and returned to give thanks to the giver. If thanksgiving is a consequence of faith, the examples above reveal that lack of thankfulness is indicative of the absence of faith. The reasons for failing to give thanks to God can indeed be strangely logical. Unlike the nine lepers who had their fantastic excuses, but with our mother Mary today, Monsignor Okodwa proclaims, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. The Almighty has done great things for me. 
and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age to those who fear him. We are not then made clean. The other nine, where are they? Was not a value neutral expression by Jesus, but a sentiment of pain and disappointment. Because much as our thanksgiving does not add to God's greatness, as noted in the Eucharistic prayer four of the common, they definitely do please God and dispose us for greater blessings. Therefore, we thank God because he desires that we do so. Thanksgiving is a virtue. A Yoruba proverb nails it. Eni ashelore tiko tukpe bi olosha tonko ni leru loni. Meaning, he who fails to show gratitude for favors received is like a thief who has robbed one of his goods. Like the ten lepers, Monsieur Kodwa returns to God's altar to especially give thanks because God has shown so much mercy on this gentle son of a simple carpenter who is not alone from the family as a priest, who also has a brother, not just as a priest, but as a monsieur. I know they will ask me, what's the difference between priest and monsieur? Not just as a priest, but as a monsieur. Double monsieur in the family. Typically, like most of us in Monsignor Okodwa, using his very popular quotation, God qualified whom it pleased him to choose to the amazement of those the world considers as qualified. Our mother Mary says, he has brought down the, the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. We all join Monsignor in thanking God for the gift of the sacred priesthood and for the grace he has granted him to submit totally to his will all these years as a faithful, loving, simple, committed, obedient, and prayerful priest, a quintessential Catholic priest. That is whom we are celebrating today. We thank God for the many lives he has used Monsignor to touch and for many hopes he has rekindled. We thank God for his protection over Monsignor all these years. He has traveled on our dangerous roads without an accident, and if there was, none that was significant. We thank him particularly those years he worked at the Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria as the National Director of the Pontifical, Pontifical Mission Societies, and he had to travel and traverse the length and breadth of this nation. Obviously, dear friends, Monsignor has enjoyed the grace of good health from God. Don't worry about the voice he started the Mass with today. It is the voice of birthday. Monsignor is one of those who has been blessed and created strong like a German. At 80, Monsignor still stands straight, no walking stick. At 80, Monsignor still spends hours in the office doing the most tedious part of administration, listening. He's a gentle, careful, loving listener. Though he has it on his door there, please be fast. There are others waiting. 
being fast is very relative because a fast case may mean just 30 minutes only. Monsieur still enjoys attending meetings. Please pray that Monsieur is not the chairman of the meeting you attend. When you think everything is settled, Monsieur will often call back as if crossing the I's, the T's of even the donation. What did we really say there? Who is taking charge of that? Uh, however, when I knew that things were changing for Monsieur was when I witnessed him taking tea without sugar. Yes, because at over 70 years, Monsieur was still fond of garnishing his tea with heaps of sugar. But no more now. All those sugar, no more now. Monsieur has surely been blessed. Apart from his hair, the hair of his head, which has been, he has been losing very slowly and systematically for decades. Slowly, no hurry. His teeth are still largely intact. His eyes, his ears functional, and he still walks majestically like a Roman soldier. Above all, his mind is still sound. May God's name be praised, both now and forever. This is grace. It is mercy. Nevertheless, no matter how strong Monsieur still feels, the fact we must come to terms with is that not that things are no longer the same. This is a reality we must accept and he must embrace with grace and gratitude. Aging is inevitable and reserved only for the lucky ones like Monsignor Kodua, like Monsignor Boyo, like Monsignor Niagu, like Monsignor Gumerede, like Monsignor Teng, like, like Babawa, Baba, Alaba, Job. They are blessed. We must not be afraid of old age because according to Psalm 71 verse 9, it is a blessing and a reward for godliness. One Maggie Kuhn says that old age is not a disease. It is strength and survivorship, triumph over all kinds of vicissitudes and disappointments, trials and illnesses. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 29 says, the glory of young men is their strength, but the splendor of old men is their gray hair, their wisdom. Wisdom of the old and strength of the young suggests that older people have valuable knowledge and experience that can be passed down to younger generations, while younger people have the energy and vitality to make a difference in the world. Our celebrant, Monsieur Kodwa, definitely understands this very much. When we look at this parish, for instance, we can attest that for years now, all those who have been associates to Monsieur as the parish priest have been given wide room to administer this parish. Yes or yes? Monsieur has often 
taking the position of supervising and mentoring them. That is why all those who have been associates under Monsignor are definitely doing well in the parishes they are today because of Monsignor's mentorship. His associates do the dancing. He does the drumming from the backstage. That is indicative of how simple Monsignor is and how simple he approaches life. A personal experience for me was when I had that rare honor of taking over from Monsignor as the cathedral administrator. Bubbling with strength of my youth and limited level of my understanding, I tried to put things, some things I believe were necessary in place. Monsignor then met me one day at an occasion and told me how people had reported me to him, likely with some sinister motives. You know that type of report? And how he told them, Ki okunrin ri ejo, ki obinrin pa, ki ejo sati kuni. Beloved in Christ, that ended the matter that would have sown unnecessary cross-generational discord among or between the elderly and the young. And I want to say thank you, Monsignor, for being a true leader and always being a true leader. Eku Agba, Agba Nyakale, Eo Nidagbaya. Dear friends, your excellencies, I crave your indulgence to round off this reflection with a thought on how we may manage priests at old age or in retirement. This is not about we and they, but it is a common reflection as the body of Christ on the realities that come about as a result of our growth as a church. Thoughts on this matter has now become imperative as our church in Nigeria is growing and our archdiocese is really growing. The number of priests has grown. Thus, as expected, the number of elderly priests is on the increase as more of our priests are clocking the retirement age. What happens when we priests grow old and attain the retirement age? In his encyclical about caring for creation, that document, Laudato Si, Pope Francis warned us against the throw-away consumerist culture, which he affirmed is damaging our planet and also infecting the way we treat each other as human beings. The Holy Father observed that for older people, this is especially dangerous because our relationship to the aged has significantly and negatively changed over the last century or so, and we come more and more to value people by what they can produce in economic terms. We value less and less both their innate worthiness as children of God, but also we come not to see them as whole human beings, but rather broken down, useless parts which are no longer needed in the capitalist meal. This description properly fits the ugly scenario of our secular society in Nigeria, where many of our elderly ones suffer and die of hunger and pain after retirement 
because few individuals embezzle the funds due to them, and those in government seem to care less about what happens to the average citizen or civil servant in Nigeria. It is said that the true value of a society lies in the way the vulnerable are treated, the elderly and the retired ones included. The church must show the way. The church reminds us that it is not just care and respect that older people need, but their, their autonomy, their gifts, their self-determination and participation in the society should not be taken away simply because of age. Therefore, in 1984, addressed to older people, Pope John Paul II said, you are not and must not consider yourselves to be on the margins of life of the church. You must not consider yourself to be passive elements in a world of excessive motion, but active subjects of a period in human existence which is rich in spirituality and humanity. You, the elderly, still have a mission to fulfill and a contribution to make. Pope Benedict XVI, in this same regard, referred to the growing population of elderly in the world as a blessing for society. He said that their care should be more of a repayment of a debt of gratitude than a mere act of generosity. The above quotations should serve necessarily as foundations for determining how best to manage the life of an old or retired priest. It is on this note that one must sincerely salute the utmost respect, wisdom, and humaneness of our Archbishop most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins in his approach towards our elderly priest in our diocese of Lagos. And I think he deserves a very big round of applause for that. <laughs> Hoping that I am not acting out of order, I testify that the Archbishop had many years ago placed the concern for making provisions for retired priests in Lagos Archdiocese in the front burner at meetings of consultors and members of the Archdiocesan Courier. As part of the fruit of this effort and vision, one must not fail to thank our Archbishop for his commitment and ingenuity evident in the ongoing building of a priest house within the compound of St. Agnes Catholic Church, Maryland. Yes. Ingenuity, ingenuity. Because putting such within the compound of Maryland means this, that that house is within a vibrant parish community it is present within the Marian Shrine, ever busy Marian Shrine. In that compound is a hospital of very high level with doctor and nurses living inside there. In that compound we have schools. In that compound we have convents. That compound alone is a microcosm of a diocese of his own. The church is complete there, and it has implications. In my humble opinion, that decision, that choice, is a naturally suitable place for priests who will 
love that option to retire into. It is the African model because we do not push away our elders from the family. Instead, we keep them with us in appreciation of their work when we were young, when they were young and we were feeble, and in order to keep tapping from their wealth of experience and wisdom, which is their prerogative from God. However, besides the possibility of a priest choosing to live in a dedicated house in such a place or parish community like Maryland, I don't think it is out of place to allow a retired priest the choice of living in any parish house in the archdiocese with a priest he feels most comfortable with, with a possibility of moving whenever he desires and it is possible. The Father Adebayo and Monsignor Adeniyi model is still fresh in our memories. May God rest their loving souls. Archbishop Martins has already shown and taught us a cultural approach to retirement of priests by his policy and actions that we all, clergy and laity, must learn to be patient, loving to all our priests, not only when they are active, but more importantly, in their old age, and avoid any tendency to chase them away. Our experience shows that retired people rely more on the parish community for strength and meaning when they are retired. Why do we now think a retired priest should be comfortable outside the parish community, away from the people he has always lived with and worked for? The time is right for us to put policies and structures in place so that priests will not begin to panic at old age about their welfare. As individuals and organizations in the church, now is the time to support the archdiocese in providing suitable and abundant facilities for our priests so that they can live within parish communities in their retirement. It is in this way we can help our priests fulfill one strong desire they always pray with the psalmist. One thing I asked from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Psalm 27, verse 4. Finally, once again, our Baba, Monsignor Okodwa, on behalf of all of us here and many more not here, I say congratulations to you as you attain this significant milestone in your life. Thank you for your dedicated service to the people of God and to the church. Thank you for your unwavering faith and commitment. Thank you for the inspiration you have been to many of us and to different people who have encountered you. I join others to pray that God will continue to grant you sound health of mind and body as you continue steadily to grow gracefully. May your night be better than your day. Before the concluding statement, Monsignor, I want to very specially thank you for giving me the opportunity and honor of preaching at this very, very important occasion of your life. May God honor you more and more through Christ our Lord. And in the words of St. Paul, in letter to the Romans chapter 11, verse 36, we take our final note. Everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory, always praise, amen and amen. Ope lo ye o
May we arise for the prayer of the faithful. My dear brothers and sisters, with grateful hearts and confidence in God's constant care, let us place our needs before him. In gratitude for God's loving care, we pray that he will guide our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the bishops and the clergy of the church as the minister to the Lord's flock. We pray to the Lord. In gratitude for our nation, we pray for God's help for all our elected officials. May the Holy Spirit guide them and may they have the good of the citizens at heart. We pray to the Lord. Gratitude for Monsignor Bernard Okodua, who celebrates 80 years on the face of the earth and 52 years of his life in serving the Lord. We pray that the Lord may grant him good health and joy that knows no bounds. We pray to the Lord. gratitude for our families and friends, especially those of us here, to celebrate with Monsignor Bernard Okotoa. We pray for God's peace and blessing upon us today and always. We pray to the Lord. Gratitude for the gifts of health and material blessings. We pray for those who do not have these gifts, that God may aid them and that we might mutually support one another. We pray to the Lord. Gratitude for our loved ones who have gone before us, that God might grant them eternal life in his presence. We pray to the Lord.
in silence, we recall our personal needs before the God of life and giver of every good gift. We pray with Mary, who gave thanks to God in a magnificent as we pray. Hear our prayers, loving Father. On this Thanksgiving day of my 80th birthday celebration, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. May we please be seated. The Mass now continues with the offertory. Let us kindly adhere strictly to the instructions of the Church Warden's Choir.
spirits. Accept, we pray, in mercy, this sacrifice which we offer you in thanksgiving for our deliverance from distress through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just and eternal salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although we have no need of your, pro you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choir of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you have you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to each setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly beseech you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night before he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving few thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Alfred Martin, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, you have God again for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children wherever they may be. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Eripsum et cum ipsa et in ipsa est tibidea patri omnipotenti in unitate spiritu sancti omnisana et gloria per omnia secula seculorum Recepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione fumati, audemus dicere.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It is time for the reception of the Holy Communion. The grace of this Mass is for everyone present, but the Holy Communion is reserved for baptized and practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves spiritually to receive the Lord. We acknowledge the presence of our brothers and sisters of other denominations, ecclesial communions and other faiths who have come to worship with us and participate in our liturgy. We request that you kindly remain on your seat and pray along as you sing with the choir. May God bless us all. Amen. Prayer before Holy Communion. Dear Lord, purify me that I may reverently and devoutly prepare my heart to receive thee. I detest all the sins of my whole life because they displease thee. 
I am heartily sorry for those which I have committed against thy divine sacrament through negligence in guarding my senses, particularly my tongue, which has been so often consecrated by your divine presence and has been stained by so many sins. O oh, divine Jesus, what confusion I feel at beholding myself so unworthy to approach your holy table. Let this holy communion not bring me condemnation, but health of mind and body. Amen.
Holy Sacrament most holy. O Sacrament most holy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Saint Bernard, let us now rise for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through this bread of life are pleased to free your servants from the bond of sin and in your compassion to restore their strength, grant us to advance without hindrance towards the hope of glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we please be seated. Amiable Archbishop, Most Reverend Alfred Adewale Martins, Your Excellencies, Right and Very Reverend Monsignori and Fathers, Our Dear Male and Female Religious, Your Excellency, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola, former Minister of Works and Housing, Distinguished Men and Women of the Church and Society, brothers and sisters of other ecclesiastical communion, members of the Okodwa family, our beloved seminarians, I'm sorry, I can't forget our beloved sisters. I want to warmly welcome all of you on behalf of the parish priest, very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Okodwa, for whose 80th birthday celebration, Thanksgiving celebration, we have all gathered here. We have all gathered as the body of Christ at this great sacrifice of the Holy Mass to pray, thank God, and to be nourished spiritually as we celebrate with Monsignor Bernard of Cordua. It is very gracious of you all to be here in your numbers and in your style to tell Monsignor Okodwa how much you love him and how well you wish for him. May the Lord be gracious to us all and keep us in his love and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May I humbly recognize all those who, it wasn't part of my protocol, I'm sorry about that, but I see them in their numbers, starting with our patriarch the Emeritus Archbishop of Ibadan Archdiocese, all the elderly ones here present. I also want to grow, and I want to grow old, so I want to recognize you specially, all those who are 80 and above. May God bless you, may God strengthen you, may God keep you, and may he be gracious to you all through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right now, our Monsignor Bernardo Cordua will have his thanksgiving, his open thanksgiving. Brother priests will join him with friends, family members, our religious sisters. We will all dance forward. And Monsignor has requested 
that our elder and patriarch, your grace, most reverend Dr. Felix Alabadro to pray for him. Your grace, please, you will do Monsignor this honor of blessing him as he comes forward with his family, friends, well-wishers for his thanksgiving. Monsignor Kodwa, please. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you for all your graces and blessings on each and every one of us, particularly on your son, Bernard, who clocks 80 today. Give him joy in his old age. Support him in all his activities Amen. as he grows in age and knowledge. Since you have said the sum of our age is 70 and 80 for those who are strong, Heavenly Father, accept our thanksgiving on his behalf today. Give him more years 
according to your wish. Grant him, however, every day of his life, the opportunity to recognize you as his Lord and Master. Give him the source to continue to praise you in his life. And for all those who have gathered around him today, Lord Jesus, give them more than they can dare to ask for. Bless us with health of mind and body. Bless us with gifts of nature and grace. Bless each and every one of us in such a way that we can know you, love you, and serve you better all the days of our lives. Amen. And may your divine blessing, O oh Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend, abide, and remain with each and every one of us here present today and all the days of our lives. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Glory to Jesus. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus. On a very thankful note, we wish to thank everybody that has been part of this celebration today to be a part of the celebration of the 80th birthday of our great parish priest, very Reverend Monsieur Bernard Ayodele Okodua. I want to thank on behalf of the planning committee and the entire parishioners, our very esteemed brothers and sisters in Christ, our distinguished guests, friends, and families of our dear celebrant, and by extension, friends of the parish who have been part of today's celebration. We pray that the good Lord will continue to bless each and every one of us through Christ our Lord. But just a little information for us, please, is that still on a note of appeal, those that have been assigned with access cards should please, after the final blessings, exit the church through the back to access the parish hall downstairs through the ramp. And then we'll please leave this side of the church for the priests to exit. From the after the procession, they go through the side of the church. Then the other guests that are here present would exit the church through the main entrance on, on my to my right and pick up a pack. There's a pack of food for everybody present at this mass. We we'll just appeal that and crave for your understanding. And those of us who are supposed to be processing to the hall will be processed accordingly. Thank you, and God bless us all. My dear sisters and brothers, please may we kindly listen as I humbly invite our dear Archbishop, Most Reverend Dr. Alfred Adewale Martins for his remarks. Your graces, my lord bishops, Monsignori, fathers, sisters, all of us brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of Jesus. And as I stand here, I stand here not on my own behalf alone, but on behalf of our Emeritus Archbishop, Anthony Cardinal Okoje, on behalf of all the priests of the Archdiocese of Lagos, on behalf of all the religious, on behalf of all the entire faithful of the Archdiocese of Lagos, I stand in order to say congratulations, Monsignor. Congratulations for 80 years. Congratulations for 80 fruitful years. We thank the Lord with you. We thank the Lord for you. And we pray that the graces that have sustained you all these years will continue to abide with you all your days until the end, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for all that you have been to the Archdiocese of Lagos in particular the several roles that you have played in the life of the Archdiocese, in the governance of the Archdiocese, and in the pastoral duties you have uh, carried out over the years. For 52 years, you have uh, served the faithful of the Archdiocese in various capacities, at parish level, at Archdiocesan level, at the national level, and also in relationship with other churches as Khan President of Lagos Khan. All of these are great indicators of how selfless you have been in the service of God, in the service of God's people, 
and in the service of the church. Monsignor, thank you very much. May the Lord grant you many more years. Our gathering today, dear friends, is not simply because of Monsignor. It is mostly because of Monsignor. But it is also because we recognize the dignity of human life. We recognize that every life is important. Every human life is invaluable before God, both at the moment of con from the moment of conception through every moment of life, in sickness or in good health, in youth, in childhood, in adulthood, or in old age. Every life is invaluable before God. That is, why, that is what we have come to say today. And I hope that all of us will continue to say this in the different decisions that we make in the different activities that we carry out, and in the different ways we relate. We relate to the unborn child, the way we relate to young people, we relate, we relate to the elderly. We pray that the joy of this day will continue to be in our hearts. Those who are 80 already, may the Lord grant you many more years. Those of us who are looking forward, one day we pray that we shall reach there also. Yeah. And that as we journey through life, the graces of God will abound in each of us. He shall provide for our needs and our country, our country going through the challenges of this time will overcome them. And we all shall be beneficiaries of a better Nigeria. It's our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, and God bless you again and again. Thank you, Your Grace, for those sublime words. Please, can we give him a round of applause again? I must make a confession that I've been privileged to be the only one to name an elder. It's always been the other way around, elders name their children, but I've been privileged to name an elder, and he has no problem with it. And right now, that person is going to speak to us. Bernard Ayodele Okodwa. But today, I'm giving him another name, which is my own Ishan name, okay? So I want to invite for his vote of thanks, humbly so, very Reverend Monsignor Bernard Ayodele Odiase Okodwa for his vote of thanks. Glory to Jesus. As you can see, it is not easy to express the joy in my heart. Maybe because somebody knows that I'm going to talk for too long and make too much noise, they decided to seize my voice so that I won't I won't share about it. It is a day of giving thanks to God. Because when I was growing up and I saw elderly people, I used to think to myself, will I ever get there? And suddenly, somebody reminded me, your 80th birthday is coming. And I said, am I 80? Did I get there eventually? Am I that lucky to clock 80? The Bible says 70, but 80 for those who are strong. I consider it 
God's grace, not by strength, not by any merit, but absolutely by God's grace that I'm celebrating this day. I give all the glory and thanks to God. All I want to say here is to give thanks to God for all of you who, sh who are sharing in the joy of today with me. Most of you I know, a few I may not know, but by association, or perhaps they are friends of the parish, they are here. I want to thank all of you. I give thanks to Almighty God for all his graces, for all his blessings, for the wonderful divine support I have enjoyed over the years. Many times we don't really appreciate God's gift to us until something happens and we see the effect of it. Uh, I may look very strong as I used to look, but I know that the body is getting weaker. But that's nature, and I can't, I don't quarrel about it. I give thanks to God for it. I want to say a big thank you to all the dignitaries in the sanctuary. I beg with it my own Archbishop, because if he has not uh, approved all the celebrations, it will not have taken place. I thank you very much, Archbishop Adele Martins, for his encouragement and support and his respect for elderly people. You too will grow old, my brother Bishop. Archbishop Felix Alabajo, the Archbishop Emeritus of Ibadan. He's one person I have known since 1959. So it is more than 60 years that we have been together. He was my dormitory prefect when I was in OKRS Seminary. He was my prefect and he was the bossa of the school. And I was a little boy just entering for the first time. During manual labor, he would ask all the small ones to go and play football while the older ones are going to cut grass and fetch firewood to cook our food. So because of that, I was very close to him. Some of you have been to my office. You see a photograph of my first year in the seminary, 1959. The picture of those in my dormitory, St. Patrick's dormitory. It was taken on the Feast of St. Patrick, March 17, 1959. And each time people look at it, they ask me, are you in this picture? I say, well, maybe I'm there, look for me. And many, many can't locate me there. But as soon as they look at it, they say, this is Job. This is Job. They are able to single out Abishab Job because he has not changed much since 1959. That's kind of, that's kind of me. I want to thank him for his blessings today, which I cherish very much because it's the blessing of an elder. And I know they always work for the good of those who are blessed. I want to thank Archbishop J. Gabriel Abeguni of Ibadan Archdiocese. I want to thank Bishop I want to thank Bishop John Oyejola from Oshogo Diocese. <laughs> Bishop John Oyejola is actually the son of the shore. He's from St. Anthony's Parish. <laughs> but when we enter the seminary, we dash, we dash at Oshogo Diocese because they didn't have many priests at that time. So that's how he came to Oshogo Diocese. He comes home from time to time to let us know that he's with us. When I informed him about this celebration, he did not hesitate to say, I'm coming. Thank you very much, my Lord, for coming. I was going to cherish you as one of us. I want to thank Bishop Emmanuel Adeto Yeshe Badejo of Oyo Diocese. He has been a wonderful son and a wonderful friend. Not just my friend, but a friend of the Yokodua family. Practically everybody in my family knows him. 
because even the seminary, uh, some of my younger ones were with him there. They didn't go through, but he went through. So, uh, Bishop Barijo, I thank you for a funny time to come all the way from uh, Oyo Diocese. Bishop Odetto Ibo Kita of Abel Kuta, I thank you very much for coming. It's a good thing that when one have this type of celebration, we have the support of the clergy, the archbishop, the bishop, the priest, the deacons, and of course, the entire lay faithful, including the religious. We are all one church. All our visitors, I'm very, very grateful to you all. I want to thank the representatives of Khan Lagos State, uh, they are sitting down somewhere. Uh -huh. They are there at the back there. I thank you very much for coming. And I want to thank our former governor of Lagos State, uh, Mr. Raji Fashola, whom I consider not just a personal friend, but a brother, because somehow we have been, we are very, we, we worked together while he was governor and I was chairman of Khan, and we never had any quarrel, any problem about anything regarding religious issues in Lagos State. That relationship has continued ever since. And of course, you know his wife is a parishioner here, so we are grateful to you, Your Excellency, for finding time to come. She is not able to come because she's not around. But please give her compliments to her as we give to her. And tell her how much we appreciate your support for this celebration. We're going to keep you and keep you strong and healthy. Don't worry. I know when you were giving that serious assignment of a double portfolio, it was not as easy to do. And uh, your hair quickly got gray like our own. But now you, you are at rest, you are resting a bit, so take your time to rest and uh, get, regain back your, your black hair. Uh, I can do that. To the choir, I want to say a big thank you. To the choir, you have done a wonderful job today. I'm very grateful to you. So my other liturgical functionaries, the lectors, the uh, church wardens, and my beautiful altar servers, you have all performed your duties well, and I give you thanks very much. Of course, my brother priests are always there. The moment they knew that I was having a celebration, we were coming from far and near. Some have come from Ijebode, from Abekuta, from Oshobo, from Oyo, from Ibadan, from all over, just to share the grace of this day. I thank you all very much, and may God lead you all back safely to your destinations. If I have not thanked anybody, please forgive me. I want to thank finally the media people who are here, particularly the Lumen Christi uh, television. They are always present at our, at our celebrations to project the image of the Catholic Church. I thank you very much, Prince Olagunju, the director and CEO of Lumen Christi. May you continue to work stronger and stronger. Like they say, Thank you all very much. May God bless you. Please may I invite all of you to rise as we take the final blessing.
Bow your heads for final blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. May he turn your steps towards himself and show you the paths of charity and peace. And may the blessing and peace of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you now and forevermore. Go forth, the Mass is ended. We now invite the old boys of our career to sing the Salve Regina as the procession goes outside the church. Salve Regina, Mata Misericordiae, Vita Duce Do, Estres Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamos, Exuges Dilia, Suspiramos, gementes et fletes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Lia de go, advocata nostra, ilios tu. Oh.